Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a great honor to introduce Superwoman of NOGS, that's Lak Dr. Lakshmi Shrikhande. She has a huge list of achievements to her credit, and she's one whose ma efforts have made NOGS shine in Foxy. So she is the chairperson elect ICOG, national corresponding editor in Journal of OBGY, national corresponding secretary, Association of Medical Women, founder, patron, and president of Vidab chapter 2019-2021, and she's the chairperson in IMS Education Committee, uh, and she has also received uh, the prestigious Nagpur Ratan Award at the hands of Union Minister Sri Nitinji Gadkari. I request you, ma'am, to start your presentation. Friends, very good afternoon to one and all, and Meghna has made my job very easier because endometriosis is a theoretical topic because I am going to speak on the ISHRE guidelines which has been released in 2022. So she has, aap sab hai. So just listen carefully because this is a talk based on guidelines, so it is really a theoretical topic. And endometriosis guidelines is a 200 page document with almost 9 sections. So I am covering the third section that is endometriosis in infertility, the Ishre guidelines latest one. You all know that it's a very common condition, occurs in 6 to 10 percent of general population and in women with pain, infertility or both, the frequency is to the tune of 35 to 40 percent. About 25 to 50 percent of infertile women have endometriosis and 30 to 50 percent of women with endometriosis are facing with the problem of subfertility. So look at this slide carefully. In my presentation, I am trying to answer these nine common queries which we all face as an infertility specialist when this woman comes to us for subfertility management. And we all are following this revised ASRM grading, that is grade 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is section 3, 1, which has addressed about the role of medical management in women of endometriosis with infertility. So the question posed here was, are hormonal or medical therapies effective for endometriosis associated infertility? So as you can see in this slide that this question, it has been thoroughly evaluated in a systematic Cochrane review, but this review does not evaluate individual hormonal treatment. Thus, strictly speaking, the assessment is confined to the role of ovarian suppression as a therapeutic modality to improve fertility. Twelve trials were included in this study. And these trials, they concluded that there is no evidence of benefit on pregnancy outcomes, although data on live birth rate are not available. So this is the guideline recommendation number one. In infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe ovarian suppression treatment to improve fertility. Now the second sub-question was, if you cannot use it for ovarian suppression, can you use it as an adjunct therapy to surgical therapy? Here also, Cochrane review was published which included 25 trials and this included 3,378 women with endometriosis. And this is the recommendation number two, that women who are seeking pregnancy should not be prescribed post-operative hormone suppression with the sole purpose to enhance future pregnancy rates. Of course, those women who cannot attempt to or who have not de or who decide not to conceive immediately after surgery, they may be offered hormone therapy as it does not negatively impact their fertility and improves the immediate outcome of surgery for pain. Now the another sub-question to this first question was, what about other medical treatments? As endometriosis is associated with inflammation, naturally anti-inflammatory drugs were of potential interest. And this was studied again in Cochrane Systemic Review published in 2021. And the guidelines are saying that in infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe pentoxifiline or other anti-inflammatory drugs or letriozole outside ovulation induction to improve the natural pregnancy rate. 
so this was all about the role of medical management in women who are having endometriosis and infertility now let us come to the surgical treatment in endo women with endometriosis is surgery effective to increase the chances of natural pregnancy this was the question which was answered in these guidelines this was addressed in cochrane review published in 2020 and the review concluded that laparoscopic surgery increases in increases viable intrauterine pregnancy rate which is confirmed by ultrasound compared to diagnostic laparoscopy only and a similar conclusion was formulated from a recent network meta analysis which was also published in 2020 that was about peritoneal endometriosis what about ovarian endometriosis the author said that they did not find any randomized control trials which compared fertility outcomes after surgery for endometrioma in comparison with expectant management but based on the combined results of eight studies the pregnancy rate was not significantly different from other treatments in ovarian endometriosis we all know that there are two common types of surgery one is cystectomy and another is ablation so which one is best a review from 2013 reported that pregnancy rates were higher in patients who underwent cystectomy when compared to fenestration or coagulation what about the role of surgery in cases of deep endometriosis these guidelines recommends that the decision to perform surgery in cases of deep endometriosis should be guided by the presence or absence of pain symptoms patient's age and preferences history of previous surgery presence of other infertility factors ovarian reserve and of course estimated efi so this was all about the role of surgery in cases of endometriosis associated with infertility now what about the need of assisted reproductive technology after surgery so the question posed in front of this was which patients need treatment with assisted reproduction technology after surgery so before and after surgery we all know that those individuals who wish to become pregnant they should be counseled objectively on their subsequent chances of becoming a pregnancy and here everyone should make it a habit to use of efi so what is this efi it is endometriosis fertility index you all can download it from google and make it a habit to use this for every patient whom you are offering surgery in cases of endometriosis so the conclusion for this third question was the need of art in after surgery was that women should be counseled of their chances of becoming pregnant after surgery to identify patients that may benefit from art after surgery the endometriosis fertility index should be used as it is a validated reproducible and cost effective and the results of other fertility investigations such as their partner sperm analysis should be taken into account now what about the medical uh, medically assisted reproduction what is the role of iui in these women there are very few studies assessing the efficacy of iui with or without ovarian stimulation so the guidelines are telling us that in women infertile women with revised asrm stage 1 to endometriosis clinicians may perform iui with ovarian stimulation instead of expectant management or iui alone as it increases the pregnancy rates now to our knowledge that is means to the knowledge of those authors who performed studies there are currently no randomized trials evaluating the efficacy of art versus no intervention in women with endometriosis indirect evidences can be derived from studies comparing the outcome of art in women with endometriosis to women without endometriosis and this systematic review and meta analysis from 2013 which included 27 observational studies and almost total 9000 women participated they found no significant reduction in stage 1 or 2 endometriosis women no significant reduction in implantation clinical pregnancy or live birth rates in women with asrm stage 1 2 endometriosis compared to women without endometriosis in women with stage 3 or 4 endometriosis 
of course a reduced implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate was observed now again one big question is which type of ovarian stimulation protocol should be used in these women whether we should use gnrh agonist versus gnrh antagonist and randomized control trial including 246 women with stage 1 to endometriosis with endometrioma they showed that the implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate after using gnrh antagonist cycle were not inferior to those after gnrh agonist protocol so as far as the art in these women is concerned the guidelines are telling you that art can be performed for infertility associated with endometriosis especially if tubal function is compromised if there is male factor infertility in cases of low efi and or if other treatments have failed is there any role of medical adjunctive therapy to your medically associate uh, medically assisted reproduction it has been proposed that following numerous non randomized studies that medical treatment of endometriosis prior to art may result in improved outcome either because of improving oocyte quality or improvement in endometrial receptivity a more recent randomized control trial investigating the effect of ultra long administration of gnrh agonist failed to demonstrate a beneficial effect on implantation rate cpr or embryo quality however pre treatment with combined oral contraceptive pills for 6 to 8 weeks as compared to no treatment before art indirectly suggested a potentially beneficial effect on clinical pregnancy rate so for medical therapies as an adjunct the guidelines tells you that the extended administration of gnrh agonist prior to art treatment to improve live birth rate in this setup of women is not recommended as the benefit is uncertain can you use surgical uh, treatment as an adjunct to your art in a review and meta analysis of hamadan et al the 12 studies were included and the review reported no differences in live birth rates clinical pregnancy rates or mean number of oocytes retrieved compared to women without endometriosis so the surgical treatment of endometriosis prior to your treatment with art could be effective in improving reproductive outcome the guidelines recommends you that clinicians are not recommended to routinely perform surgery prior to art to improve the live birth rates in women with revised asrm stage 1 to endometriosis as the potential benefits are unclear what about surgery prior to art in women with ovarian endometrioma because the moment we see endometrioma we tend to offer a surgical treatment before taking up them for art the clinicians again here are not recommended to routinely perform surgery for ovarian endometrioma prior to art to improve the live birth rates as the current evidence shows no benefit and surgery is likely to have a negative impact on the ovarian reserve these are the, you have to go in great details there is document is available on google you all can document the uh, download these 200 page guidelines what about non medical treatment strategies here a systematic literature review looked at the chinese medicine post surgically and they were only able to include two studies and they did not find any improvement in pregnancy rates with the use of chinese medicines or with the use of vitamin c e with as compared to placebo what about fertility preservation in this subset of women the guidelines tells us that in cases of extensive ovarian endometriosis clinicians should discuss the pros and cons of fertility preservation with women with endometriosis because the true benefit of fertility preservation in women with endometriosis it remains unknown and it's a costly procedure now does endometriosis uh, has any impact on pregnancy outcome yes it is not uncommon for we all to tell these women with endometriosis that after pregnancy your endometriosis will improve friends this sometimes does improve but not in all the cases 
so patient should not be advised to become pregnant with the sole purpose of treating endometriosis as pregnancy does not always lead to improvement of symptoms or reduction of disease progression and these are the possible complications during pregnancy from a pre existing endometriotic lesion you all can see i will just tell you that the guidelines tells you that as a clinician as an obstetrician you should be aware of these complications in your pregnant woman if she has conceived with endometriosis or endometrioma of course there is a slight increased risk of miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy in first trimester in second trimester there can be increased gdm preterm birth premature rupture of membranes placenta previa because of the uh, abnormal placentation hypertensive disorders and preeclampsia risk of stillbirth risk of increased cesarean section risk of obstetric hemorrhages small for gestational age baby admission to nicu is higher risk of neonatal death is higher so the guidelines again sums up this as clinician should be aware of endometriosis associated complications in pregnancy although these are rare and these findings are based on low to moderate quality studies that is why you have to be aware and you have to manage your cases appropriately so these are the nine questions i have answered in these uh, they, they have answered in these guidelines but the take home message is that you have to follow these ishre 22 guidelines as far as possible as far as physical if you are planning surgical treatment do make use of efi but individualization is the key for optimum outcome in On this set of women so thank you friends thank you so much for your patient hearing artificial intelligence ab sabse bada problem hai ki hum to sab intelligent kaun hai humko aur artificial kyun chahiye that's a very big problem all over the world people are talking artificial intelligence artificial intelligence artificial intelligence why we are talking about thing there was a one <clears throat> uno me ek meeting hui and they found out ki let's discuss about it and find it out ki poverty kaise jaye how the poverty will go by the artificial intelligence so many researchers computation a big data list came they gave some solution gone then they talked about what is god bahut sara computation hua and bahut sari things hui but they couldn't find out what is god by artificial intelligence so what i am saying though i am going to talk on the subject artificial intelligence but the end of the day हमारे जो दिल में गॉड बसा हुआ है ना हु इज गोइंग टू ट्रीट एवरीथिंग सो दिस इज द लेटेस्ट सब्जेक्ट आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इन ओ बी जी वाई एन एंड दिस इज अ फ्यूचर बेसिकली इट्स ऑल ग्लोरियस जर्नी एंड दिस आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इज देयर आई थिंक आई एम ऑडिबल सो इट्स अ क्रिएटिंग अ फ्यूचर आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक समथिंग विच इज नॉट डेली टू डे टू डे वी लिसन अबाउट इट वी नो अबाउट इट एंड वी नथिंग डूइंग अबाउट so this is a digital computer systems that parallel the way human brain processes information number 2 organization of artificial intelligence is similar as neurons in our brain with a multiple neural nodes therefore referred as the neural network an artificial neural network consists of dependable mathematical system that can interpret multiple factorial data i am telling you this is a going to be future in next 15 20 years most of the our practices will be taken by artificial intelligence so what exactly going to happen by the transmission of that data forward and backward via the multiple synapses this neuron processes the answers number second thing making this multiple connections enables the computer to mimic cognitive functions and number third point is such as the reasoning process to identify the most probable answer to the problem so this is artificial intelligence and it can assist prevention diagnosis and monitoring of the disease by using a complex algorithm at the end of the day that all the computers will make with the data a algorithms will be made and that will help into the this thing artificial intelligence can aid the doctors into the decision making and that will help clinician to make appropriate and timely decision so these are the various points is a very busy thing about it but this is the artificial intelligence and there is a landscape they will do robotic they will do autonomous thing they will do next generational clouding they will do thought control they will do virtual comparison 
they will do real emotion analysis they will do several things so artificial intelligence not in the field of ourselves but also in the field of obgyn everywhere it is good it has got four compromises core elements just to make it a very simple what artificial intelligence is number 1 is a machine learning we should know about the ml that is a mother in law that's a machine learning number 2 point is natural language process that is nlp the third point is artificial neural networks and fourth point is a computer vision so these four points are important when we talk about the ai so what does the ml does it on the resize on the subtle patterns and interface make future predictions number 2 it is designed to understand human language including the speech number 3 ann is inspired by the biological neurons and comprises of computation and unit of neuron this topic is not that simple but it is future i am telling you and this is a cv it's understanding the images videos facial recognition and technologies like the moment we open our mobile phone by facial recognition they identify us same in artificial intelligence everything will go to happen in future so in a healthcare how they are going to help us in three forms number 1 is hcp facing number 2 is a community facing and number 3 is a research business of the healthcare now the promise of artificial intelligence in a medicine is number 1 to provide composite and a panoramic views of individuals then another is a medical data third is improve in a decision making avoid errors such as misdiagnosis and we can prevent the unnecessary procedures and help in ordering and interpretation of appropriate test to recommend treatment this is eric topol who is a person who has done lot much work in artificial intelligence so our life is like that in the mobile phone everybody i am sure in a hall 56% time we are busy with our mobile phones this is in a future what's going to happen so the professional purpose or the per personal use now the digital world means a networking connecting with the patients then we want patient communication and we want peer to peer networking and emr and retrieving the information now how the ai can help us in our practices number 1 we can diagnose things we can do any drug discovery which is needed for such we can do it can help us in a clinical trials it can improve the patient outcomes at the end of the day what we want patient outcome it can have the clinical decision support and then it's some information management these are the thing but what are the barriers barriers is initial adoption of the issue like the topic i have given artificial intelligence aadhe log soch rahe honge kya hi bolne wale hai pata nahi kya topic hai simple thing is like that we have the adoption issue then the data privacy concern we don't we don't want to give our data to computers and to this is a concern then compliance to the regulation how the government will act how these things will be regulated who will look after what are the internet freedom foundation will do so many cyber laws are there they can be there and the most important is stakeholder complexities who is the best and at the end of the day stakeholder lagte hain har cheez ke liye so how it will work so these are the barriers but the examples of ai in a practice we have smart watches we have ct brain bleed diagnosis we detect the sign of diabetes retinopathy breast density and mammography these are already in a practice then we have a coronary calcium scanning scoring and mayo clinic all the cervical cancer screenings are done by ai so that there is a community facing over the millennials who are born in the year of 1982 and from four lakshmi and we will agree that our younger kids they are in the, the thing that they are a 50% will stay would give up the sense of smell rather than the lose of device connection so they will like that and one third of them rather have a flexible work environment access to social media than the bigger paycheck so these are the problems and they should be authentic available and affordable now the research and bell kids artificial intelligence simplifies the lives of patient doctors and hospital administration were performing task typically done by humans but in less time and a fraction of a cost very important and the other world's highest growth industries ai sector has valued more than 600 million dollars in 2014 and it is projected to reach 150 billion dollars by 2026 so you can understand the importance of ai in future
it's a business of healthcare retail healthcare service and delivery so this is the it's a digital technology purchase products and taboo of infertility so i am just talking a few slides in a 6 minutes that all the artificial intelligence in obgyn how it works and where we are in a role of obgyn fetal heart rate monitoring in a future all artificial intelligence will take the fetal heart rate monitoring same the intrapartum surveillance parturition will be taken by ai preterm labor diagnosis and management will be taken by this thing and all in usg will be taken gestational diabetes a big role of ai ivf is a big role of iavf and a cancer screening now the currently the fetal heart rate monitoring and all these things are urogyne gynec oncology so in a fetal heart rate monitoring it helps to monitor fetal heart during the labor by analyzing the ctg estimating the possible outcome this technology will help help the decrease discrepancy between the different obstetrician kya junior rso ne dekha kya resident ne dekha kya hod ne dekha if the artificial intelligence is there sab ek hi baat bolenge and interpretation will be same so helpful to the patient more reliable replicable output for each analysis and ultimately reduce the perinatal and maternal complication so make it a point very very clear in future all of us fetal heart rate monitoring is going to be with artificial intelligence then it's a simple quantitative and a qualitative overview of baseline fhr beat to beat variability acceleration deceleration intensity of uterine contraction everything everything will be data analyzed and it will be done and there is a study of intelligent system to support decision making in a management of labor using cardiograph this is a study protocol and it's going on and it's very very important and go but there are limitations disagreement between the specialties interpretation of ctg stress aaj bhi hum ladte hain tab bhi hum lad sakte hain and system 800 for monitoring fetal heart by detecting beat to beat variability acceleration deceleration they have a problem now preterm labor is a second thing now machine learning particularly deep learning achieved a good excellent prediction of perinatal outcome and asymptomatic pregnant women and it currently short cervical length strongest risk factor of prematurity many women carry this and there are problem so this is a algorithm which is based for the ai age hypertension diabetes smoking sare ke inputs aa jayenge data se usse management ho jayega analysis hoga algorithm ho jayega classification hoga and will find it out ye preterm labor mein end up hoga or not end up hoga so the steps are firstly the method is a collecting data second is prepare properly third is a proper selection of machine and the learning process should be training validation and the test so preterm labor is a combination of ai amniotic fluid kitna hai metabolics kitna hai what are the rate what are the contractility what is the demography what are the clinical factors all will go and accuracy is 97% i am telling you it's a big accuracy to determine the uh, predicting the ptl and it is going to be a very very important in asymptomatic women machine learning is very very important and it will give the predicting the neonatal outcome so artificially then a gynecologic obstetric and i'm just skipping this slide now the gestational diabetes all of us know everybody is having a monitor gestational diabetes it is artificial intelligence they find out everything and there's a algorithm wearable sensors hote hain there is a phones on the app there is a records there is a telemedicine and outline the communication and a social media and this is all important for the gestation and high bp hyperlipidemia smoking all the factors will be excluded and data will be stored and how to predict the gestational diabetes is another important point now the ivf ivf specialist this is a really innovative technologies in vitro fertilization and this is a future either in a gamete selection or in a embryo selection or in a treatment regime they will tell that this patient needs uh, what is the selection what is the gamete selection what is the treatment and they will do the pgd also and they will find it out what is the which uh, embryo is best which has to be instilled this all will be done by ai and ivf is a future it helped physicians to predict pregnancy success rates and then created the hybrid intelligence and third point is, is decreasing the learning techniques in from the ivf patient so ivf has got a big role for ai and the infertility is gamete algorithm decision pre learning the assistance in predicting uh, outcomes the big studies are going on and they are doing a very good job so the integrating and uh, this is also the same big study artificial intelligence embryo and uh, this 
suicide classification. Now the simple ovarian carcinoma. This is also important. In ovarian carcinoma screening, all the software predict the patient's ovarian carcinoma precisely. It can most effective treatment according to the diagnosis of each patient. More targeted therapies, kya dena hai therapy, what they, artificial intelligence will help. And cervical precancerous patients will also be there. And screening of the ovarian carcinoma is easily done by the prediction. So another important find is digital technologies above study system will relate the information and detect the errors. Now the Eurogyne. Eurogyne has got also big scope. It's a wearable device, uh, devices, AI system. Patient condition can be monitored and managed. Vir virtual sites allow the easier follow-up. So there are several fav things, input layer and output layer. It will be at a pelvic floor, it will be at urethra, it will be at a demo age voice and so many things and they can help the severity of the prolapse, we'll find out what is the bladder pressure is, what is the urethral pressure, what are, all the things can be found out and this is the algorithm or the diagnosis and measurement, then prognosis and prediction and for this artificial intelligence for the surgery is another thing. Another is a parturition, this is another a big scape. What the patient, the doctor will sit outside like this and just do the algorithm and find it out at what time she will deliver. So we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and we all always underestimate the change that will occur in next year, 10 years. I am sure we have never thought that this much articulation in the next year and what will happen in 10 years. Just give me one more slide for the take home message. All IAI has a promising future in the overcoming diagnostic challenges and improving the treatment modalities. Number two, is the further development in AI will continue. Clinicians must embarrass them when necessary, recognize its advantage and drawbacks, continuing to provide best patient care. And the AI is not meant to replace practitioners. That's more, more important. But serve as the adjuvant into the decision making. That's another important point. And all can, AI can be used in a promising tool by OBGYN as approach to resolve several long-standing challenges. Then it can assist the clinician in a decision making and intra-observer variation. And therefore a need of further research in the field of AI is a promising for the obstetrician and gynecologist. So thank you so much. And I, at the outset, I like to tell, let each and everyone flourish by saying every member matters. I'll be the direct link between the grassroots members of the Foxy and I will love to energize, inspire and activate youngsters and bridge the gap of the innovative ideas. Thank you so much for the patient listening and given me the chance to speak on the subject of choice which is its of future. Thank you so much.